All right, let's continue our face off between the Samsung Galaxy S2 and Motorola Droid Bionic. And take a look, a little closer look at the user interface on both. Again, both of them are on Android 2.3 Gingerbread. Big difference is going to be on the Galaxy S2, you have Samsung TouchWiz 4.0 UI. And on the Motorola Droid Bionic, I don't think they call it Moto Blur anymore, but basically it's Motorola's overlay, so we're going to call it Moto Blur. Anyway, let's start with the navigation. Uh, Notifi not navigation, excuse me, notification bars up at the top. Uh, Galaxy S2, you see it gets shortcuts, uh, connectivity manager shortcuts for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, sound and auto rotation, uh, of which you don't get on the uh, Droid Bionic. Other than that, the notifications themselves will pretty much look the same. Let's take a look at the main menus on both. Here's our main menus, and they both move left to right, right to left. You get sort of a nice 3D effect on the Droid Bionic. You also have a choice up here as to where you can go to Recent, Downloaded, as well as Verizon Wireless Apps. And you can add new groups, make new groups if you'd like. You've also got a shortcut to the market up here in the upper right hand corner, which is very slick. And then you can sort A to Z, manage your apps, Again, it takes you into the task manager, which is nice. And then you've got your settings for the apps. It just takes you into your primary settings menu. On the Galaxy S2, again, it moves left to right, right to left. And are there shortcuts down here? No, no shortcuts there. There are shortcuts here. You can simply tap on one of the dots down at the bottom. It'll take you directly to that panel. You can also hold down on it, and a number will come up. And you can shift between the panels quickly as well. As far as editing, you can edit the panels and basically to uninstall an app, simply tap on the little red dot. You can drag and drop. I can move voice search up. I can move voice down. So that's how I can rearrange and choose different apps down here at the bottom. On the Galaxy S2, I can add a folder. I can add a new page. And then when I'm done, simply hit save. And it brings me back. So there's a look at the main menus on both. As far as holding down the home keys on both, it brings up recent from the uh, main menu that we just looked at, which is pretty slick on the Droid Bionic. On the uh, Galaxy S2, you only get the last six, but you get an actual task manager. Both phones do offer a task manager. And this one I like, it's uh, pretty slick going. You can exit all. You can go into RAM and clear the memory and drop it down as far as it'll go, which is pretty cool. On the Galaxy S, excuse me, on the Droid Bionic, we'll go into All Apps. And where's our Task Manager? I know I've seen it. Here it is, Task Manager. It allows you to close apps, but I don't find it that it works. You have to tap on each one to close it. There's, I don't find anything that automatically closes um, your apps for you in the main menu, which is too bad. Check under Settings. Nope. So it's a little bit more work, but you have Task Managers on both, which is pretty slick. All right, as far as the, the screens or panels themselves on the Droid Bionic, you can get a five different panels that you can customize. As you can see there on the Galaxy S2, you're going to get up to seven, which you can see here as far as adding widgets. Galaxy S2 is a little different. It runs along, they run along the bottom, which is um, a little different. One of the things that's pretty slick about it, though, you can add something to that panel and then switch to another panel and add something to it. Like we'll add that and we'll hit OK and let's put that up there on the, um, well let's remove one, simply holding down on it and then dragging it up. We'll remove it. Both of them allow you to resize widgets. Go to the widget menu and we'll put the, uh, put the calendar back in there. And that's it. And you can see all the different calendars. Hit done and there you go. And again you can resize these holding down on it. Get the four corners, oh, and drag it right, drag it over, and let me see, let me see if I can get it to resize, there we go, we get it to resize, and there you go. So you've got five different panels plus the widgets, and you've got seven over here on the Galaxy S2. So there's a little look at the user interface on both of our combatants. Next up, let's take a look at the messaging systems on both. So you've got a new message um, starting to compose on both. Let's go in here first up and check on input methods on both. Gingerbread keyboard is something I use. I've downloaded from the market, but it comes with the Samsung keypad and swipe on the Galaxy S2. On the Droid 
Bionic, again, multi-touch and swipe, so they both offer the same as far as keyboards. This is the multi-touch or Samsung keypad, and again, you've got speech to text in the same location. Basically, you have an option to get, a, get at settings from the keypad on the Galaxy S2 where you don't on the Droid Bionic, but other than that, they look pretty much the same. Long press for numbers, and that's about it. What do you say we're going to take a look at swipe on both? And there's our swipe keypads. And again, as far as differences, we've got a language, a little bit different of a layout, but speech to text is down over here on the right as opposed to the left. You've got long press. For numbers across the top on the Droid Bionic, on the Galaxy S2, you can see the numbers are in the center with symbols around. Um, you've got a shortcut for smileys on here that you don't over here under symbols. Everything looks similar. You've got a little bit more available on the uh, Galaxy S2. All right, so let me try this call, John, on Tuesday. Not so good. Call John on Tuesday. Seem to pick up a little bit better, but both of them seem to handle it quite well. And as far as attachments, you can see you've got your guesstimates down here below. Uh, your input area, which is very nice on the uh, Galaxy S, or excuse me, on the Droid Incredible, which you can set up also on the Galaxy S2. Um, what I wanted to take a look at was attachments on both. And let's go in here and look at attachments. Existing picture, new picture, existing audio, new audio, existing video, new video, slideshow, location, and name card. Pictures, capture picture, videos, capture video, audio, record audio, locations, contacts, calendar, memo, and tasks. So you get a little bit more to pick from on the Galaxy S2 than you do the Droid Bionic, but both of them do a very good job, I think, of handling messaging. There's a look at the messaging applications on both. All right, what do you say we wrap up today's face-off between the Samsung Galaxy S2 and the Motorola Droid Bionic with our browser comparison? Got them both running off the same Wi-Fi network. I've cleared the cache and history on both, and I've got Flash fully enabled on both. So with that said, let's head over to Engadget, and we're off. And it looks pretty neck and neck at the moment. I think maybe the Bionic is a little bit ahead. And we're up. Oh, nope, Galaxy S2 is finished. And you can see just how smooth it is. And let's try the Droid Bionic. Again, not bad. But not as smooth as the Galaxy S2. And I really haven't found another Android smartphone that is. Let's zoom in all the way. I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back. There we go. Double tap to zoom in. Give you a look at the text on both. There we go. And pinch to zoom. Both work great. One of the advantages of the Bionic is you can Pinch and zoom, double tap, and it will rewrap the text. It does not do that on the Galaxy S2. You can go into settings and determine the size of the zoom when you double tap to zoom in. You can have the text either smaller or larger. I've got a set in the middle, but it doesn't... Uh, when you pinch and zoom and double tap, it simply zooms out. Both of them handle it very well. The Galaxy S2 is definitely a little smoother. All right, let's head on over to Smartphone Envy. There it is. And we're off. Again, it looks like the Galaxy S2 is going to get there first. Here comes the Droid Bionic. And it's going to be the, well, for some reason, we're going to speed bump on both. Let's see. Droid Bionic shows it's got a lot down there, just nothing there on the display yet for some reason. Galaxy S2, you really see how powerful it is, the fact that it's not fully loaded and you can still scroll through the page completely unhindered. And on the Droid, you can see that it, Droid Bionic, it won't scroll at all until it's fully loaded. There we go, it's starting to a little bit. 
and it is fully loaded so it won the contest although let's see I don't know why this doesn't show it being full it looks like it's completely rendered everything oh there we go okay so the Droid Bionic was the first one there however the Galaxy S2 seems quite a bit smoother what do you say we double tap to zoom in on both there's your text and let's go to read more on both and let's see how they run the handle the video which should be on both there we go it rendered on the Galaxy S2 first and we're off Well, I actually thought the Droid Bionic was ahead of the uh, Galaxy S2 until we got to the end. Anyway, uh, both of them had no problem rendering the uh, video from uh, YouTube via Flash. So there's a look at our comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S2 and Motorola Droid Bionic. I'd have to say the Droid Bionic gave it some pretty good competition. As far as a favorite for me, though, I'm still going to stick with my Samsung Galaxy S2. But the Motorola Droid Bionic, if you're on Verizon, is definitely a quality choice device. Anyway, that's it for Craig from SmartphoneMB.com. Appreciate you looking. Hope it's been helpful. Take care.